Hello, everybody. Welcome to Millennium Games TV. I am Cass. I know you haven't seen my face before, but I work over at the front end and I handle kind of the RPG and the miniatures section. And today I have the long awaited Deck of Many Things alternate cover that I've been dying to open and I thought I would open it with you guys. So as you can see, beautiful craftsmanship here. Big, big box, big, beautiful alt cover. I also have here on the shelf the regular cover, the general art cover released by Wizards as well. Here, I'll put it on the big monitor so we can all see. Beautiful cosmic vibes here. Lots of beautiful art, but I'm a sucker for alternate covers, and so I decided to go for that one. So put these right back up on the shelf. So it can sit and watch us while we open her sister. So this got released a little while ago. I wanted to do an unboxing just to see that it's not only a book, but we also have the entire deck of many things in a nice, lovely little box. So without further ado, let's just get right into it. So let's see here. You guys are about to see my beautiful unboxing skills. Oh, is it? No, here we go. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Watch me not be prepared and need scissors. Oh, here we go, here we go. It's been sitting, it's been waiting for me to open it. So she's a little nervous. So inside the box, as it says here on the back, we have the hardcover book that goes over the deck of many things. It's a supplement that's great for DMs, but also for players. I love when my players come up and be like, hey, I saw this in the Dungeon Master's Guide or saw this magic item, can we incorporate it somehow? And so this is the perfect book to go through. We also have 66 of all the Deck of Many Things cards and a reference guide to help you use the cards however you need to. So let's get right into it. Here we go. Oh my gosh, I'm opening this like a beast. I'm just so excited. Ooh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. We all love a soft touch hardcover book. We got that going on right here. We have the alternate cover. I love the embossed kind of art deco vibes that are here on the side. And then here we have the entire case for the cards. Oh my God, I'm obsessed. This is gorgeous. Okay, here we go. Oh my God. The art on these are so beautiful i definitely opened it upside down that's so funny so let me do this so we can all see comes in this lovely lovely box so you're not lugging them around in some like velvet pouch or something open with care no sharp objects do you hear that Tanil? no sharp objects okay Amazing. Here is the hardcover reference guide. It's got this beautiful Gorgon head on the front. I'm obsessed with it. And then we have this lovely little guy. Look at him. He's reading my cards. I don't want to look at his face. I just want to look at the cards. But I want to look at the book first. So here is the entire... Oh, oh my gosh. It goes through each card. This is so thrilling. The art is beautiful. So these decks are really, really, in my opinion, crucial to a high level party. Once you can really trust your players to like handle stuff on their own and handle their own consequences, I would hand them this deck. Low level party, if you want something crazy, go for it. But you know, I'd be a little careful. But it looks like we go through each card in the 66 card deck. This is really fantastic. It gives you kind of like clues on how to use it in a really like rules is written way and then it looks like it gives you some ideas on how to <laughs> kind of put your own flair on it which I think is great it mimics kind of like a tarot reading which I really do enjoy where positioning is super important whether it's upright whether it's reversed when you pull it how you pull it but yeah this is really fantastic gem card my personal favorite gets you rich beyond your wildest beliefs and this looks like it has an entire magic item table that makes it really easy so you don't have to go fish for an item to give someone when they pull the gem card. You've already got it right there. Easy reference, ready to go. Yeah, guys, this is really fantastic. My heart is racing. This is really fantastic. It also looks like in this set, it gives you ways to use even just a simple like 52 card like bicycle deck on how to kind of add little flares. Like here it says here for the 
Three of cups, so that would be tarot or hearts. The card covers the target in a thick layer of ice. The target takes one D10 cold damage and must succeed a DC 15 constitution saving throw or have the restrained condition until the end of your turn. So I like that it adds a little bit of extra flair onto the card that you pull. This one's the rogue, which is a lovely card to pull, especially if you have a character who's a little bit of a goody two shoes and doesn't really expect anyone to turn on them. The rogue is really perfect. I think what's great about the deck of many things too is even if you just use it as a reference guide, not even for the random pull between a player and a DM, but almost as like a gift or a, you know, a curse to give a player from the deck specifically. I like using the cards that way as well. But this is great. This doesn't leave you hanging in terms of like, okay, I pulled the rogue card. The rogue just means, oh, someone has turned on you. Okay, that can go so many ways. So this guide gives you a lot of options in terms of specifying that, where things are going to go, left or right, bad or good. But yeah, this book is really beautiful. The art is just lovely. I love the cosmic vibes of the whole thing. Oh, is this one... This must be, yes, the night card. I love the night card. A character who draws the night card from the deck of many things gains the service of a loyal warrior. Now, if you're a DM, you can really run yourself into the ground with this in terms of like, oh man, either I gave this character a completely overpowered knight to use at their discretion, or you can go totally the opposite direction of, I gave this poor character like a nothing <laughs> companion. So this entire section for the night card gives you anti-magic armor, armor of fungal spores, armor of the fallen, all of these very specific boons you can give a player so you're not left just trying to scramble to figure something out. It looks like it also allows for a lot of customization. If you have more of an edgy player, you can give them, say, the armor of the fallen. It's got skulls. It's got bones. You look crazy. You look scary. This bow of melodies I'm already obsessed with and I'm already locking in my head to use for later. I love it. So that was really the draw to the book of many things for me, at least, is this hyper expansion on the deck of many things that's been around since you know, the longest time. Just recently in the store, we got traded in this beautiful second edition, or no, I think it was 3.5 edition set of one of the original deck of many things. And the art was so sweet and I loved it. So this deck's been around forever and everyone kind of has the idea of, you know, what the deck does in a very loose manner. And it's really up to DM discretion. But other than that, it's really you know, kind of empty. This guide really allows you to get to the nitty gritty and make each card really count. What I'm super curious about is the effects for more of the hard hitting cards, like, um, you know, the cards that kill you and send you to the terrible planes of the abyss or whatever. But, oh yeah, look, Odelwyn. This is this little, little guy's name. He's reading all these cards. Oh, I'm so obsessed with this, guys. This definitely is going to open up like such an amazing avenue as a DM, but also as a player to kind of give an idea about what's in the deck and how you can really super expand on it. I'm just like, I'm so thrilled to just sit down and go nonverbal and read the whole thing in like two hours. But enough about the book. Let's get to the cards themselves. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. Very, very lovely. Look at that reveal. Aww. Oh my goodness. All right, let's get this little book out. So here's the reference guide. We'll take a look at this. I love the shape of it. It's kind of like the old school tarot books that you'd get with your decks. Oh yeah, look at this. Here's the well card. So you have the upright meaning and reverse meaning, which is like another play on tarot, which I think is so fun. The warrior card, void, tower. Okay, here we go. Yes, skull card. This is what I was looking for. So if you pull the skull card upright, a person facing imminent death or one who wields a necromantic power. So a skeletal figure is shrouded in swirling robe. 
though its skull is clearly visible, the skull card is a reminder of the universality of death and the fact that everyone must confront death alone. So a lot of times when you pull this card, the description's like, oh, you die. No, oh, come on, we can put more flair on that. I love that this gives such a beautiful, just like, edge to it and allows the DM, it gives the DM lots of tools to like, make it a little bit more flourishy than that. And it looks like this guide plays more of a, like a tarot guide in, it looks like it gives descriptions for creatures or traps for a place or situations, which I think is really, really incredible, especially coming from the deck of many things where it just kind of had one flat meaning. Here's the gem card again, which I just adore. Let's see what it says. Ooh, okay, this makes sense. For like a place, it says a mine or a treasure vault. I love that idea. This could be used especially when your players aren't like sure where to go next. Maybe you're down a player and you guys just need to do a quick little offshoot one shot. I love the idea of having the players pull a card for whatever adventure and it gives you this idea for a place and if it's reversed, a place associated with poverty such as a tenement or a slum. I love that. I love that we have two meanings for the cards so you can really just have so much fun. Oh my gosh, this art is fantastic. We have a blink dog here for the Fae. Looks like for the person upright, a person with Fae ancestry or some other connection to the Fae. So I love the idea of this person using kind of like the augury spell for a lot of clerics and like knowledge domain clerics. They use that spell to kind of have an idea about what's gonna happen next. The DM can use this card specifically to give an idea of what they're looking for without revealing too much. So this is fantastic. I love the shape of it. I love the quality. I do love these cards. I love recognizing all of the um, uh, creatures on this and I also love recognizing the artists. This is one of my favorite artists, Abigail Larson. She does a lot of really beautiful gothic horror art and so it looks like she's all over here. She also did this sweet little um, modern which is adorable but I see a lot of artists here that I recognize as being part of the D&D community so I love seeing this huge widespread of styles and oh my gosh are you seeing this Tennille? Are you seeing this adorable? This is so cute. Another Abigail Larson piece. This is the beast card. Looks like, say I pull it upright and we're using it for a person, a person who avoids the comforts of civilization or indulges in predatory attitudes. That reads to me druid commune or maybe an isolated circle of spores druid. And then it looks like the reverse meaning, a person who fiercely represses urges they deem bestial in themselves or others. I'm immediately thinking werewolf. I'm immediately thinking an offshoot or an, a quick adventure of, you know, figuring out a blight in a forest that could be affected by a creature going through these urges. I'm, my gears are moving. I'm already there. I'm, <laughs> I'm so excited about this. So yeah, oh, look at this beautiful cover. This is amazing. I love that they referenced so many artists and credited them inside the book too. So you can go find them. Well, without further ado, let's get right into it. I didn't bring any scissors, so I'm hoping my nails can get this apart. Everyone's conundrum. I love the gold foiling here. I don't know, Tennille, it said, did you see? It said, no sharp objects. <laughs> Tennille walking over with a box knife, just like, sheer force of will. Oh my goodness, I think we might just have to disregard the sheet. I think I might need a sharp object to kneel. <laughs> Gently, <laughs> Gently, carefully. Oh. Make sure you have a parent like I have right now. To kneel, to my, my guardian. There we go. All right, we got gold foiling on the cards, which I'm already in for. Look, if there's a book, if there's a deck of cards. If there's anything and it's got gold foiling on the side, I'm there. Cass is there. All right, let's get these open. Yes, 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 yes. Oh my God, I'm so pumped. Okay, here we go. Uh, get that good plastic ace more. Oh. <laughs> okay, here we go, guys. Let me get the camera all nice. Yes, look at this. Oh, these are absolutely 
gorgeous. <gasps> Stop. Oh, wow. So what's incredible, I just noticed they also have the artist's name on the card. I love that. Yeah, so it looks like, oh, this ring card. <gasps> oh, oh, you guys. I'm obsessed with this. This is amazing. This is fantastic. And I think what I also love so much about this is this case isn't too bulky, but it still has its own kind of flourish. So you very well could just pop this case in front of the players and have them pick from it. Oh, here's another great Abigail Larson picture. The undead card. Oh, that's good. Oh, yes. All right. Yeah, I got some, here's another one. Okay, I'm gonna be careful. We're not gonna hurt ourselves or the cards, more importantly. Do do. There we go. All right. Yeah, they spared no expense in printing these. The There's not only gold foiling on the side, but there's also really beautiful silver foiling on all of the stars, as you can kind of see as I move it around. Aberration card. Here's that beast card we were talking about. I love the idea of putting something really, like, nefarious and spooky and then pulling a card with a literal unicorn rabbit on it. It's just like tarot. A lot of the a lot of the cards in there can be really sweet. Gem card, rich all of a sudden. Knight card. I have a literal knight servant I can use. There's a card where you like automatically level up. And then there are some cards where you pull and you, your soul gets trapped into an urn or you get banished to another plane of existence. So, and there are some cards that really just don't do much. And I kind of love that. Here's that construct card that we looked at. The corpse card, ooh, the feathering. The, f what's this called, f fletching? I'm an English major, I know words. The fletching on the arrows is this really beautiful red foil. Yeah, guys, this is just like fantastic. Lots of Ivan Chevrin, who is another fantasy artist that I do also recognize in this deck. The little stars, I'm gonna try and, catch the light just right gosh that's just so gorgeous and like they're really great quality they're not just cardstock like these are legit cards like I would I'm gonna be taking very good care of these yeah look at this beautiful spread Ooh, this map card I'm gonna try and catch the light oh it's so tough so it's got this beautiful little trail going all the way through in this red foiling. I love that the red foiling is featured on a lot of these. Oh yeah, there we go. That was that deck. Okay, let's go this one. I also love the back. It matches the, especially the cover here on the regular art, not quite the alt cover, although I'm just like a sucker for Art Nouveau. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna be getting the alt cover. I just can't help it. Do, do, do. Nice and gentle. B1. B1 with the box cutter. There we go. All right. Okay, guys. This balance card is really beautiful. It's got some gold foiling on it. I'm going to put it right here. The comet card. This card is pretty intense. I'd let, let me find it so I can read the description for you guys. The comet card. I also love this art. It's very... It's giving... Dragon Age to tarot card art style. Here we go, the comet. So say Tennille was like, man, I really wanna pull a card from the deck of many things. And I'm like, you know what? Go for it. Tennille, I'm about to run a really fun City of the Spider Queen 3.5 turning into a fifth edition version campaign. And I have a feeling I will be implementing these cards. So this very well could happen. <laughs> This could happen to Tennille. So say Tennille pulls the comet card. A comet with an enormous tail streaks across the winter sky at night, outshining the stars. The comet cards bring <laughs> the comet card brings dire warnings or devastation. Oh. <laughs> so it looks like, say, this was kind of like an augury moment of like a person we're trying to get some insight into. A serious person with a gloomy outlook, perhaps carrying bad news. Oh, I just got a brilliant idea. I love the idea of a DM using the deck of many things to help create 
NPCs or even big bad evil guys. This immediately gives you not only the vibe of your creature or your enemy, it also gives you some really tangible motivation and kind of like the rights and wrongs and their own morals. And that already does half the work as a DM for your character. All you need to do is now give them the solid motive and a cool name. Looks like a situation, a, a crisis about to spiral out of control. So yeah, the comment card, probably not the best card to pull, but I love the idea of, you know, having a cheeky player. Mm, you don't really want to reward them, so you're like, oh buddy, quit, quit pulling that. All right, this is what's in your future. So let's see what else we got. The Fates card. I love this card. This is on the front of the card reference guide. It was also one of my favorite cards for the original deck of many things. This one's really great if you love retconning um, or if your players have done regrettable action, in my opinion. This, this card is really quickly the little rewrite. This card. Oh. Oh. I want this on my wall. This is gorgeous. Doesn't look like it has any foiling, which I kind of love. The artist is Harry Conway. Let's see what the Flames card does again. I know the Talon card is one that I've pulled many times before, and the Talon card's no fun, because I do believe that one you lose a magic item. Let's see, Flame, how's the alphabet work? Do 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 do. Fiend, Fey, Flame. Okay. A Chain Devil. Wreathed in flames, looks menacing and angry. The flames card brings enemies in vengeance. So the upright meaning, say, let's look at, let's look at treasure. So this could influence the idea of a random loot table. If you don't have anything prepared, the idea of pulling a card for that loot is probably a pretty good idea. Treasure, a treasure that has been the subject of intense discord or rivalry or a magic item originating in the lower planes. So I love the idea that already, like, I see some kind of contested item between two houses in the hells or even, like, two archdevils fighting over one object that you now are in possession of. A situation would be a deep-seated anonymity that cloud the judgment of those involved or someone's thirst for revenge. That gives me very social intrigue, political subterfuge in these like deep pits of the hells or even like the many other planes. I love the idea of, you know, when you play like Water Deep Dragon Heist, and you have all these factions that are fighting. That's such small, small meat compared to the idea of these grand houses in the Underdark of Drow that are fighting, or even like these gods and archdevils fighting over an object that your measly little party has. It provides such an awesome opportunity for a moral choice, which I think is the heart of every D&D campaign. So yeah, that's the flame card rant that I just did. The Fool, love this one. This is a great one. It's a humbling card. You're automatically a little stupider, which I just love putting on people. Ooh, okay, here's the Knight card, which is that one we talked about. Ooh, I love the different art styles. <gasps> I just heard Tennille gasp. I just heard Tennille gasp over the monitor. Her and I are on the same page right now. Oh, you guys, this is gorgeous. The moon card by Valis Gax, who also just did the night card that we just looked at. I think I kind of want to go into the book for this card. Let me see, let me see. The moon, the moon, the moon. Let's see. The sun card that must mean the moon is after. I'm so right. Here we are. This chapter details the Moonstalkers, a thieves guild of evil lycanthropes that dungeon masters can use in any D&D setting as criminals, rival treasure, hunt tre treasure hunters, or potential patrons. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm obsessed with that idea. A gang of werewolves? That, that's so cool. Oh my god, it gives you an entire history on the Moonstalkers. Now, I've never heard of Moonstalkers, and it looks like the Moonstalker Guildhall is a large city, but enchanted doors in the Guildhall access other settlements across the different phases of the moon. 
For instance, in a Forgotten Realms campaign, you might set a guild hall in the city of Neverwinter with the phase-based doors connecting to Waterdeep, Port, Nyanzaru, Baldur's Gate, and elsewhere. That is insane. I'm obsessed with it. My gears are turning. I'm already thinking about where to put this. Wow, that's fantastic. This is amazing. Oh, and look, they give you guild leaders already. Oh, yeah, this guy is definitely a werewolf. Look at this guy. Look, look, sometimes you look at a guy and you're like, that guy's definitely a dragon in disguise. That guy's definitely, this guy's definitely a werewolf in disguise. His name's Boss Augustus. And, yep, he has his little wolf form that he could go into. Augustus is a, hu a hulking human werewolf of few words. Oh, I'm already in love with him. I love the I love the strong silent type. Oh, this is amazing. Another boss. Wow, this is amazing. So they've created this entire guild, this entire faction for you to play with just based off one card. This is really, really fantastic. This I really was expecting just a book full of magic items and maybe a little plot hooks, but the fact that they've created an entire faction for you to play with and not only just a faction for you to play with in one area but for you to access across the forgotten realms especially with baldur's gate having just come out i say just coming out they came out what a year ago <laughs> baldur's gate 3 coming out a lot of people are now jumping into D, D, having this already kind of preconceived idea of what the forgotten realms looks like and so it's so smart for them to create a very unique guild a very unique faction and have it be accessible all over the place. Personally, like for me, if I were in the Forgotten Realms universe, my first place I would go to is Silvery Moon. I think it's one of the most underrated places on the map. A lot of people love uh, Waterdeep and Baldur's Gate. Yes, 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 those are great. Silvery Moon, I, I wanna see this in Silvery Moon. I'm gonna put a door in Silvery Moon. <laughs> That's gonna happen. Wow, guys. <gasps> Stop, guys. Stop. Look at this. They give you the map. Look at this. Look, so say, here we are in the barracks, number 14. Nice little right in the middle. You've got... When a Moonstalker needs to spend the night at the guild hall instead of their home, they can sleep in the bunk beds in this barrack. Two werewolves and three were-rats are currently sleeping there. So, even if say you were sent out skyrim style to destroy this entire guild you have the entire breakdown of this guild hall available all based off of one card that i pulled this is fantastic i i'm not even like playing this up you guys i had no idea that this book was this in depth in terms of these cards i thought it was just like don't worry, guys, we reprinted them for you for 5e. No, like, this is way more in-depth. I am so thrilled to be using these in my game. Sorry, Tennille. <laughs> You're gonna be subject. Oh. Oh. <gasps> oh, my gosh. Okay. I want to see all three of these together. Look. Look at these cards, you guys. These are all made by the same artist. Looks like it's Valis Gax. These beautiful, beautiful cards. The star, the sun, and the moon. Okay, well now, I don't wanna keep you guys here too long, but I do wanna peek at the sun, see if it's any different. I love the idea of there being two rival factions, one of the sun and one of the moon. Let's see. Yep, here we go. It's, it's another organization. Ooh, this chapter details the Solar Bastion, a benevolent organization that protects the multiverse from the chaos wrought by the deck of many things. They literally are a faction sent out to protect the world from the very deck that they are in. That is amazing. I see a lot of lawful good. I see a lot of Cleric of Lothander happening right here. Like, I'm absolutely obsessed, you guys. Oh, wow. And then look, a Solar Bastion Knight. You have a whole creature card right here for you to use. I love the idea then of a DM possibly using this if, say, a paladin or even a cleric wants to go that route. Or I guess even a fighter wants to go this route. You have an entire creature card for them to use. This is really, really amazing, you guys. Oh, oh it's giving Planescape. It's giving 
I'm just obsessed. This is so beautiful. Look at this flying whale. I want to be here. I want to live here. I want to be here. They have they the the hand on the sun. You're so right, Tennille. Jeez, it's so. Oh look, I literally just said Spelljammer, Planescape, so vibes, Spelljammer Harbor. This is in space. This is in the multiverse. This is absolutely beautiful. Okay, guys. Oh look, Sir Jared. Sir Jared, he's here. He's in the chat too. Jared's in the chat. You're right here, my brother. Looks like we have here in the Solar Bastion, it could be a location that your players get to sit at and kind of explore. And it has an entire list of quests. Let's see, let me see one that's really cool. Combat a curse. So this is also a table that you can roll on if you wanna do it randomly. But for me, I love picking quests that are a little more focused to what my players are doing. So this one says combat a curse. After plundering a dragon's horde, Adventurers attract a constant ill luck. Make sure the treasure isn't cursed. If it is, ensure they aren't spreading the curse as they spend the gold. This is so fun. It's very light. It's very easy going, but at the same time, there's a lot of material there for you to build on. All from a card. Oh gosh, you guys. Oh, okay. Well, I know what I'm doing <laughs> later tonight. I am looking through this entire deck and honestly, you guys, you could build an entire campaign based on not just this book, but this deck. I love the idea of a group of adventurers, you know, focused all around, even if they just are part of the Solar Bastion faction, focused on controlling the chaos of these cards, or even the idea that they are cursed with these cards and have to spend them or bring them from one location to another or even if they fall in the hands of your party having say the solar bastion come after you for having and using the cards so much i can fit an entire campaign around around this set and i'm personally personally really thrilled to keep exploring i'm going to read every inch of this book so yeah guys this is available currently in our store as well as the alt cover. I highly suggest picking this up if you're a DM who's in need of something that's kind of stepping outside of the box, something that plays even further into the game of chance that is D&D. &D. Um, I think that's one of my favorite parts of being a dungeon master is playing with your party. Having the surprise be both on your players and on you. I think that's what makes the game so much more enjoyable for everyone. So yeah, that is my unboxing of this amazing book of many things and the new deck of many things. So many fantastic artists, artists that I recognize from Twitter, from other previous books, from other all planes of RPGs. It's really, really thrilling to see not just that, but them put front and center and brought into the community and recognized by Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. Guys, like, I'm I'm just so thrilled. I'm already, like, itching to go home and start writing. I'm already having ideas for the Tenille campaign that I'm about to run. It's just for Tenille. <laughs> Everyone else is going to be, you know, just doing the regular D&D. But Tenille, I'm going to hand them that deck and it's going to be great. So, yeah, thank you guys so much for joining me. I have some Millennium news, too, before we go crazy and get out of here. We have new shirts in the store. This lovely new retro design, Millennium Games, Rochester, New York. Let me see if I can turn around and show you the back. Can you see it? Can y'all see it? Play something new, guys, okay? That's our motto here. But we have those in store as well as really nice new sweatshirts. Same design, nice navy blue. On top of that, keep an eye out on our website. Kill Team signups for the new Warhammer 40k Kill Team League is gonna be going up this week as well as a lot more of the Old World Escalation League. We're gonna have a lot of 40K and a lot of Warhammer and Games Workshop minis going on in the game room. So keep an eye out for that. Star Wars Unlimited, the new TCG brought to you by Star Wars. Personally, I'm very excited. I've been dying to get into a TCG. Look, you can't work here, you can't play here without eventually stepping into magic. 
you know, Yu-Gi-Oh! Pokemon. So I want to dip my toes into the TCG world with Star Wars Unlimited. Pre-release is going to be March 2nd and 3rd, and then official release is March 8th. Let's see, coming up on the 17th is our board game Saturday. That's going to be all day. We have big, like, the entire game room is just covered in people playing board games. I'm all the way in the center of the floor, and I can hear the, like, lovely, like, joyful rumble coming from the game room during board game days. It's just fantastic. Another important thing that's coming up that I recommend everyone participate in, we have some folks coming over from Ninth Level Games to do a free demo of two of their games. I have one right here, actually. The Beautiful Mazes. Ooh. I love hardcover books with foil on it. Um, Tenille recommends this game. I know Tenille has talked about how much she loves mazes. Great quality, really fun art on the inside. So there's gonna be a free demo of that on top of a couple other games brought to you by Ninth Level. And that's gonna be on Saturday on the 10th of February. Yeah. So thank you guys so much for joining me. This was such a fun first stream for me to be at. It feels really good being back in the chair with you guys. And hopefully I'm gonna be having a lot more really thrilling things to show you guys in the world of RPGs. So yeah, shout out to Tenille for being the world's best engineer and the just the best. Yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Play something new and I'll see you guys later.